When it comes to building WordPress websites, one of the areas that can help make you look a little bit more professional is styling the login page. Now, this is something that doesn't get a lot of love inside WordPress itself, but with Login Press, both the free and the premium version, we can get away with creating much more bespoke, much more original login pages to help you step up your WordPress game. So, let's take a look at what Login Press can do for you. Okay, so before we start working on the login press login pages, I want to say one thing. This is not a sponsored video. I purchased login press with my own money. So what I'm showing you here is completely unbiased. If you want to use it, you can do, you can use the free version, but if you want to have those extra features, then take a look at the premium version, which we'll cover in the second half of this video. Okay, so login press, what do we do? How do we use it? Let's just jump back over into our dashboard and I've already gone ahead and installed login press. Now you can see we've got the option to upgrade, we've got the option for settings, customized and so on. And this is where the nice thing about login press comes in. You can use a typical looking customizer and it integrates into the WordPress customizer. So you're going to be working inside a very familiar layout. So first of all, let's just jump over to the settings and see what we have. If we click on that, we'll jump over and it'll say, do you want to allow us to do this? We say, skip this step. We don't want to give them any information. We'll just leave it as is. So you can see now we have a range of tabs across the top. Now, the thing I want to say to start off with is if you're using the free version, which we are currently, only the settings section is available. All the rest are just basically upsells on what these different features in the pro version can do. For most people, the free version should be more than enough. So let's take a look at the settings. First of all, it tells us we can do all the styling and everything inside the customizer. We've got a couple of options though. How long do you want the session to last for? In other words, how many minutes will the login session last? You can set that to whatever value you want. I'm going to leave that to the 10 minutes. That's perfectly fine. Do you want to use custom password fields? You can say enable custom password fields on registration forms. If you enable that, you'll have a custom password field inside the registration form itself, which then will overwrite obviously the default WordPress ones. Again, we'll leave that as is. Next up, the login order. Now it's up to you how you want to work with this. And some people will say that from a security point of view, it's better to use just one. So if you want to, you can say only use the username, only use the email address or what WordPress normally does is you can log in with either the username or the email address. Now, for many people, the email address is the better option because if you are using this on a client site or you're using this on a site that has multiple users, just remember the email addresses associated, especially if it's your main email address, can kind of just make life a little bit easier than having to remember some randomized username that you might use. But again, entirely up to you how you want to use that. You then got the reset default settings. So it'll say remove all of my custom settings. This will just switch it back over and remove any custom settings you may have applied. And the final option we have is remove settings on uninstall. Now, this is one of those things that I think is a great way and more plugins should include this. And that's the ability that if you take this plugin off your website, all of the settings inside the database to do with this plugin will all be removed. It's a switch so you can leave it as is if you're just testing this out and you might think, well, I'll disable it and call it back up later. Or if you know you're just testing it out and you might get rid of it, you don't want any residual information left behind you have that little checkbox there that will take all of the settings out for you. So everything is looking good in there. I'll leave that as is. I'm not going to make any changes to that. All looking fine. Let's just jump over to the customizer now and we can start to see what we can do to customize our login page. So there we go. We're now in the customizer for login press. And as you can see, we've already got a more customized looking form. Let's take a look on the left hand side of the options we have. First thing we have in there is themes. If we click and expand that out, you can see we have a range of predefined, pre designed layouts that we can use as the basis for either one click change or we can use it to just use it as a basis and then we can fine tune and tweak all the aspects of it. Unfortunately, you only have the default option available in the free version. If you want to access any of the others, you need to unlock the premium features. But like I say, you have a fully customized option. You can still use pretty much all of the other settings to tweak and fine tune to get this exactly the way you want. So all those different options are available if you have the pro version. Let's just jump back out of there. The next thing we have is the logo. Now you can see we can come through and we can choose all different options inside here. However, if we move over onto the page, you'll see we also get a range of different icons that allow us to directly influence that information. So let's just say, jump back out of the logo section and we come to the logo on the page itself. We can click the little pencil icon that will then open up the related tab and then we can go through and we can configure that to get exactly what we want. So if you want to disable the logo, we can just check that and that'll remove the logo completely from there. However, if you want to create a more branded experience for you or your client or your users that are going to log in, it's recommended to use the logo that's part of your website. 
It's a great way of keeping that brand consistency. So let's do just that. Let's just change that branding. Select our image. Now at the moment we don't have a logo, so I'm gonna upload my logo in PNG format. I'm gonna drag and drop that onto there. We'll give it some alt text so we know exactly what this is and good for our SEO. And then we'll just say, choose image. You can see that now drops that in there. So now we can go through and we can make sure that looks the way we want it to. So we can adjust the logo width to make it bigger or smaller based upon the logo that you're working with. So let's just set that to something like 190. You can adjust the height of the logo so we can just fine tune this to make sure everything sits nice and neat and tidy. And you can also adjust the spacing at the bottom. So you can see we can increase that, decrease it, whatever we want to do. We can also set the logo URL and the logo title inside there. So if you want this to link through to a specific page, your homepage, for example, you can set that to be a logo URL and click and it'll go through to there. Logo title, again, good for SEO. So there's a the logo. We've changed that. If you want to come in now and change the background, we can just change the template or we can change the background by using these icons in the top left hand corner. Let's say change the background on there. That'll take us through and we can now choose any of the pre-uploaded backgrounds. So we can choose any of these. You can see that pretty much loads in almost immediately. So we can choose something from there. Or if we want to, we can disable this and we can choose a color. So we can say we want a background color. Let's just go for this horrible red. Very easy to do. We can clear that if we want to. And if we want, we can also upload our own images. So we can say select our image. We'll choose this one of the mountain range. We'll choose that. And then if we want to, we can go through, we can style exactly how that background image is going to be displayed. So no repeat, center, cover, and so on. So all the things you're used to when you're working with any kind of page builder and laying out the position of any graphics on there. You can also use a background video if you want to. So you can click to enable that and then you can choose the background video and you can select that from your actual local server. So you have options available to make sure that this looks the way that you want it to. Also come in and choose things like adjusting the actual input fields. We can choose what information is displayed at the bottom. So you have a lot of control over exactly how this works. So you can see straight out of the box, you can easily come in and start to fine tune and configure this to get exactly what you want and just have a much nicer looking login section for your WordPress website without going down the necessary need to purchase that pro version. Now, another feature that's pretty useful inside here is the error messages. We can click to expand that. Now you can see it says incorrect username and we can go through and we can choose what we want to say in there. And we can also use some HTML code to make sure that we have things emphasized or we can have them bold and so on. Now, one of the nice things about this is it's good if you're not using any kind of security plugin, which realistically you should be, one of the things that WordPress does is it tells you what you get wrong. So if someone's trying to hack your website and you say invalid username, then they can keep on trying different usernames. And the same goes with the password and so on and so forth. So what you can do is you can change these to something a little bit more ambiguous if you want to. So instead of saying invalid username, you could just say some of the information input is incorrect and use that on all of the error messages. So people that are trying to access your site don't necessarily know your username or password, or if they're getting one or the other wrong, it becomes a lot more ambiguous. Is it as good as using some kind of security plugin? Not at all always recommend to have some kind of security, but anything you can do to sort of make it more difficult for anybody who's trying to access your site, then it's always good to see in any kind of plugin. So that's the error messages. So that's pretty cool. Welcome messages, you can set things in there as well. So you've got different welcome messages and lost password messages and so on. So you can configure this pretty much any way you want to. You can even come through and choose any Google fonts that you want to use. But unfortunately, as you can see, that's a premium feature. So you will have access to that if you decide to go for the pro version. Now, before we take a look at the pro version, there's one last thing I want to show you. You can see if we come to the custom CSS JS, you can easily come in and start adding in your own custom CSS if you want to target specific parts of this login form or the page in general. And also if you want to apply custom CSS, uh, custom JS JavaScript, you can do that directly inside here as well. So it's good to see that included in the free version and not just restricted to the pro version. But now we've covered some of the basics and the kind of things you can do with the free version. If you're interested in finding out what the pro version can do, stick around because I'm going to go through some of the key features, some of the cool things you can do with this than pro version. So I've downloaded Login Press Pro and we're now going to take a look at what you have. So we've come back into the Login Press section. We're going to come into the settings and you see we've got a little bit of a change in there. All of those extra tabs are now removed. Reason being because we haven't actually installed any of the add-ons. 
However, you'll see there are a couple of new features available inside here that we didn't have with the free version. The first thing we have is force login. What this will do is it'll restrict anybody from viewing the website without logging in. So if you have a kind of private or community based website that you don't want people to see anything on there until they've logged in, you can enable that. So that's pretty cool. You've also got enable recapture. So if we enable this, you can see it comes up and says it wants us to insert the site key and the secret key for our recapture account. So if you are using recapture, then you can enable that, add in your site key and your secret key, and then you can start utilizing that in the login form. Again, another cool thing to see. Finally, okay, so we've covered the basics in there. Let's just jump over to the add-ons now and see what we have. So we come over here, you can see we've got seven different add-ons we can choose from. The first one, login, logout menu is completely free. So you can just click to enable that and have access to that feature. We've also got login redirects, social login, and a couple of other ones, which are pretty cool. Now we're not gonna cover all of these because some of these are very specific to what you're trying to achieve and they're pretty self-explanatory to be honest. But there are a couple of things I want to take a look at. The first one is login redirects because this is incredibly powerful. So let's enable that. That'll download that, activate it, and get everything ready to go. Then we can take a look at the options for the login redirects. So there we go, that's now activated. So let's just jump back into our settings section. Once we do that, we'll have a new tab under the settings for our login redirects. If we click on there, you can see this opens up and we have two additional tabs we can utilize. We've got specific user and specific roles. Now what exactly does this actually do? What does the login redirects do? Well, as its name suggests, it allows you to choose a user group, for example, your editors or your contributors or so on, or allows you to target specific users and then send them off to a specific URL when they log in. So let's take a look. If we say specific roles, we can come in and we can say we're going to search for a role. So let's just say editor. So we'll start typing that in and there's our editor. So now it says, the role is editor, what's the login URL and what's the logout URL. So we can now come in and customize the login and the logout URLs for this particular role. Now this is great if you want to force people to go to various different places on your site specific to their user base. So for example, you might want the editor to immediately go over to the listing of articles or you might want them to go to a particular dashboard setting, whatever you kind of want where you can drop the login URL in there and the logout URL where they go when they log out. This is great. Like I say, it gives you some real good control. However, you've also got specific user. So if you don't have a massive website with thousands and thousands of users, this can be quite powerful. So you might have a particular user that you want to forward them through to a specific location when they log in. And the same goes with the logout. So you can easily come in, search for that user's name. Once you identify them, you can then choose them and you can specify what their login and their logout URLs actually are. So let's just say I'm gonna choose myself. It's not gonna be the best option, but we can see exactly how it works. So there's my user ID, there's my username and my email. I now can come in and I can say, what's my login URL and what's my logout URL? And then I can update that. And every time I go to log in, I'll be redirected through to that specific page. And every time I try to log out, I'll be redirected through to that specific logout page. So these login redirects can be very, very powerful. Now hop back over into the add-on section and I've enabled the social login and the auto login. Now some of the other ones, like I say, are self-explanatory. Login widget will give you a little widget you can use in the sidebar or any way you can call up widgets inside WordPress and have a login form section on there. Eh, kind of pretty self-explanatory. Limit login attempts and hide login. As his name would suggest, it limits the number of times you can try to log in and also hides the login, puts it under a different URL as opposed to wp-admin. Again, I tend to use a security plugin that does these kinds of things, so it has a lot more control. But if you're not using something or you'd like to use this instead, you have those available. I'm going to leave those as they are. Let's just jump back over now into the settings section and take a look at these other options. So the first thing we need to take a look at is the auto login because this is one of those areas that's pretty powerful. Come to auto login. See, auto login lets you, the administrator, generate a unique URL for your certain users who you want to provide a password and login on your website. So in other words, you don't need to give them login credentials. You can actually just create 
a specific automatic login link that you can send to them. So that means you don't have to worry about sending them passwords and all those kinds of things. So if you've got, for example, a problem with your website and you contact the developer or theme designer or something, and they need to log in to take a look at things, then you can use this option to automatically create a login credential for them and then just wipe it out afterwards or set a time scale on it where it actually will no longer be active. So it means it'll limit the amount of time they have access through to the admin site of your website. So again, this is pretty cool. So let's take a look at how we use that. So I've opened up a copy of Firefox now. I'm not using Firefox as my main browser, so there's no cache history in here. I'm gonna click, we're gonna drop in the link, and we're gonna hit enter. You'll see that'll take us to the home page, and if we take a look at the top, you can see we're automatically logged in now as test user. If we click on WordPress and come to the dashboard, then depending upon what credentials I may set up will depend upon what you'll see. I've set this up as an editor, and you can see we have all the editor-based tools on the left-hand side. So no password, no usernames, no nothing. Immediately logged into the website. So a super cool and simple way of allowing people to access the admin without having to supply them usernames and passwords. So if we take a look, you can see everything is in there. If I want to delete that, I can delete it. If I want to create a new version of that, a new live link that'll negate the old one, hit new, that'll refresh and give us a new one. Or like I say, we can delete it. So the auto login, I think is one of those things that's an amazing way of being able to simplify the whole process of giving people access on a temporary basis to your admin on your website. Next up, we have social login. So let's click onto social login. In there, you can see we've got two tabs and we have a set of options based upon what social logins do we want to work with. As you can see, all the usual culprits are there, Facebook, Twitter, Google, LinkedIn, all pretty cool. So all you need to do is if you choose one of these, let's say, for example, Facebook login, expand that out. We need then to insert the Facebook app ID and the Facebook app secret. Now, this is one of those things that whenever you want to link any kind of website through to something like a social login or any of the features that you can have as part of Facebook, Twitter and so on, you are going to need to set up, for example, a Facebook app ID and have that secret accessible. So if you don't know how to do this, maybe this isn't the easiest thing to do, but we do have help there. So if we're saying I have no idea how to start doing this and I want to use Facebook, well, we can click and open that up and we have a step-by-step -step guide tell us exactly where to go, what to do, where to find the information to be able to create that relevant information so we can start using these social logins. So Facebook is covered, Twitter, Google, and LinkedIn. So all the things you should need are there for you. So all you need to do is enable these, follow through how to create and access the information to get access to these social login and then you can just input that relevant information. Again, you see if you open Twitter, you can see we've got the Twitter API, secret key and callback URL. And we've also got LinkedIn and for example. So all those options are there for you. You've also got the enable social login on the login form and the register form. So if you want to, you can have that on both of those, both the login and the registration form. And you see, remove, record on and install. This tool will remove all login press, social logins recorded upon install. So again, it's another one of those things that if you remove this plugin, this gives you the ability to remove any of the extraneous data that might have been stored as part of your copy of login press. So it's good to see that's in there so you can remove those if you don't want them. So that's login press, both the free version and the premium version. Now at the time of recording this, you can grab the premium version for a lifetime deal over on AppSumo. I'll drop the link in the description below so you can check that out. However, if that's gone, you see this in a couple of weeks or a couple of months time, and you're thinking, actually, I'd love to grab grade to the premium, then you can use the link in the description below, or you can head over to wptats.co.uk forward slash login press and find out more from there. If you want to learn how to get more from WordPress, consider clicking on the links you can see on the right hand side right now. They're going to help you get up to speed and get more from your WordPress websites. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video, pop those in the comment section. And let's get that conversation started about what you think of login press and anything else you'd like to see covered on the channel. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.